now what's up everybody welcome to the you need a horror podcast this is episode 102 i think so yeah 102 christian told me to intro this one i don't know if he did it on purpose or not because i think he knows that i might be on a soapbox tonight uh a lot of stuff's going around on the internet right now. We've got some interesting stuff to talk about, everybody. Uh, that may or may not include Pazuzu. But before we get there, uh, Christian, you want to tell everybody how you deleted the episode? Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I was trying to. I was trying to approach what to say to people because I, I just I, I felt horrible, and I didn't want people to be like because I didn't want to say there's a chance. And no, I still have not heard back from YouTube, but I didn't want to tell people there's a chance, and then. They get excited, and then it just doesn't happen. So long story short, we filmed like a, an episode right before Nick w went to Tennessee to try to fill in the gap, which obviously some of you have noticed there was no episode last week. Or Yeah, there's no episode last week. So I, um, I we, we recorded the episode. Everything was fine. And then I... I pulled it off of StreamYards because you record this on StreamYard. That's how we do it anyway. And then I download it and then put it on you. My I edit it down if I need to make any changes. Upload it unlisted to YouTube. The link goes out to our patrons early, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what happened was my mic's getting loose. So what happened was I did everything normal. I edited the podcast, pulled it off of StreamYard, and I'm Nick can attest to this. There will be times we get ready to record, and I say, "Give me a second. I got to delete shit off StreamYard." I'm constantly backed up on StreamYard because I never delete anything. So I finally was like, "Okay, I, I had to go delete. I had to go delete stuff." And of course, one of the things I deleted off of StreamYard was the episode we just did because I already downloaded it and uploaded it to my channel. And that next morning, I was going to. The next morning, I was going to post it out to patrons and Nick the link so he could do the same. Well, the night before, I my wife was out of town and I was just bored out of my mind. So I'm literally on YouTube going to my unlisted videos that were stuff that I used to maybe rip something or upload something to rip it off. It's whatever, whatever you do with unlisted videos. I did stuff for friends that they could rip to put in their intros or videos or whatever. I accidentally had the check mark clicked on the box for our newest episode how i did that no effing idea and so i deleted that on accident so the next morning i'm going to share the fucking link for the episode and i'm like where the fuck where is it and of course i deleted it off of Streamyard because i'm constantly backed up so i needed to because i just delete the top stuff so i fucked up so i completely deleted an episode we did on accident i do apologize guys but well i want to say christian don't worry because I wanted you to explain that just so people knew why there wasn't an episode. But I also wanted to let Christian know that we ended that episode off uh, going down the list of Blumhouse movies and saying whether or not we approved or disapproved of the movie. We're going to do that with this episode, too. At the end, we're going to do that again because we're going it, to it's I feel like it's almost kind of perfect, honestly, because we're going to be predominantly talking about a Blumhouse movie today, I think. So when we get to the end of the episode, we're going to talk about the studio as a whole and give them a thumbs up or thumbs down. I mean, sound I good. Love, I had a fun time with that. I'm more happy to do it. And before we get into the meat and potatoes, let me bring up a few things that I, I want to address to the audience. Comments, questions we get. We have a lot of announcements, a lot of new changes coming. Uh, first things first. You need a should have an episode once a week. I don't want people to ever think because I do different shows on my channel or my videos. I'm doing some non horror stuff every night. You need is always going to be once a week unless one of us are too busy or I accidentally delete an episode. <laughs> so we've got a hundred episodes. You got to think about something to go a hundred episodes in two years. Um, Sean Clark just had his podcast with Chris Nelson, which is look by all accounts. I'm not jaded. Those guys are industry people and they have a lot more. They're great guys. I'm not saying that, you know, we suck, but like, I think people, they have a great audience too. I love what we do here, but we managed to do a hundred episodes in two years. Those guys have barely cracked 50 and they've been together much longer than us. So, I mean, the work ethic here is incredible. So just know for everybody listening, unless I fuck up, I'm too busy or one of us can't do it. We should have an episode once a week. Because people yeah. people hit me up and was like, "Isn't you need a done?" I was like, "Dude, it's been a week. Like, give me a fucking like, goddamn." But I, you have to realize, 
that it becomes a part of people's lives, which is flattering. So I, I appreciate that they get that. So just know, unless uh, something happens, we should have an episode every seven-ish to eight days. There's going to be some big changes coming up in the future. Um, Nick, and feel free to interject because I can just I just want to get this all out right now. Yeah, like, do it. You know. So, and this was not something we have a we have a knack I've noticed on this show of talking about ideas that we have before solidifying them, which isn't a negative. I think the audience probably likes that, but certain stuff I don't want outside opinions on respectfully to you, the audience. I love you guys, but some stuff I don't want any outside opinions on. So this was something we talked about. It's a, it's a decision we've made. We're both happy with it. We both think it's a good decision. There were times in the past where I felt maybe I should have created this on its own channel. I've talked to friends who have podcasts that have made on their own channel and most of the most of the reception I got on that was just, oh, God, it's such a struggle. People don't just jump to, to a new channel. I don't care what it is. Now, some of you listening would probably say, what's the big deal? Of course, if you made you need it, some channel, go follow it. And I thank you and I believe you. But the fact of the matter is, you know, you got to look to what others have done in the same kind of area and just see, see for what it is. That, that doesn't mean it wouldn't be a success if we did move the channel to its own channel move the show to its own channel. But the fact of the matter is I figured the fan base, the viewership we've gone this long to change that would be almost counterproductive at least for a while. And it would really bum us out if we're putting all the work in. And of course we don't do this just for views, but the fact of the matter is we're accustomed to, you know, the shows do good. There's a, there's an audience for this show. I mean, I'm, we're blessed. We're thankful. We love each and every one of you that, Watch, like, comment, all that. And I don't want to screw around with that. So you need a, the episodes for you need a, are going to stay on Planet CHH as they've always been. This is where you'll find our episodes. But I wanted to make it feel, and this was nothing Nick said to me, but I, I put myself in his shoes and I, I imagined how would I feel if, you know, we do this podcast. I, it, the podcast was my idea. I came up with the idea for the name, the show. And I chose, I asked Nick, I didn't just choose him like I'm some fucking God or anything. I asked Nick, I think you're the right guy. Do the show. He, and he did, of course. But it's our show. It's not my show. But what I wanted to do was try to do something to make it feel more even keel for the both of us. And so I had this idea. Nick liked the idea. It's going to be called the You Need a Live Debrief. Now, this is the ideas I had for the show. One to two times a month, probably two, hopefully two. We're going to do live You Need a Show's on Nick's channel, not my channel. We're going to do that on Nick's channel. That way you'll be, you'll be getting God fucking seven hours of content a month from the podcast, you know, this way. And we still have to do an after dark for this month. We haven't done one for July. We have to do an after dark. It's I'm, I say still busy sometimes. Like I, I can't keep up with everything, which is good. <laughs> it's how you don't, that's how you stay out of depression. If you're too busy, you can't be fucking sad people. But we got to do that, but we're going to do what's called the you need a live debrief. Now, this is the ideas I had for the show. Obviously, it's going to be a live show with the audience. I want to do a show after two episodes of the month. We'll do a live on Nick's channel. We'll break down some of the stuff we talked about with you, the audience on the show. And what I also thought would be great was have an incentive now to always, if you're a listener, drop your comments. Because what we can do on the show now is the comments that we get from the show, we can talk about, we can answer them questions, comments. We can answer them on those live debriefs Roast so me. now. So now you, but you know, so now you'll get, you need a content that's unique, but still you need it. And I will still put these on Spotify for those that enjoy listening. The live debrief episodes will be on Spotify as well. So you're getting for all you motherfuckers out there that are like, is you need a done. Now you're getting more. You need a, than you even asked for. So I'm happy with this. Nick's happy with this. I think this is a home run decision. It It, it is. It is. And we yeah. talked about it and I had no qualms about it. As Christian walked you guys through our thought, you know, the thought process and how we landed on certain decisions, but let's not kid ourselves. Like we, we want to be, you know, transparent with you guys. We want to build this into a brand. Like we really, really do. I mean, you see some of these podcasts that like, everyday people know about there's bumper stickers of certain podcasts like and i'm not jaded to enough to think that oh we'll ever get to that point that's not what i'm saying but 
we definitely want to build a brand. We definitely would love to get to a point where we could do a horror con one day and like people know who we are. And in order to do that, we, we've got to, we want to give you more content. We want to give you different avenues to access that content. And we knew that if we went to a new channel, it, it's true. Like Christian said, we'll just use our friend Lee as an example. Lee's got over 50,000 subscribers. He started an extra channel for clips and, and extras and stuff. Just broke a thousand subs. And, you know, that that is great in and of itself. But like that's 5% of his audience that took the time to go to that other channel. So that's what we mean when we say it is incredibly difficult to, if we were to two plus years into this venture, go create a new channel. It just, yeah. YouTube would be against us. It, there, there's just a lot about it that that wouldn't work. So yeah, I mean, I'm stoked with it. I, I really, really am. And like Christian said, I think you guys, if sometimes you feel like your comments don't ever get addressed, well, these debrief episodes that we're going to do live, we're going to, I mean, I'm sure Christian or, or myself will screen share, yeah. pull up comments from previous episodes and we will address them live. Even if you're roasting one of us, like, so, and, and I, I mean it. So Nick is exhausting. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. I'm exhausting. Oh God. <laughs> oh yeah. man. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. We have a great time. And, you know, I've I've got ideas for those shows, but of course they're live. And because it's on Nick's channel, I, I'm going to leave a lot of discretion up to what he like would like to do in terms of stuff during the lives. If, if there's a guest, hey, Nick's like, hey, Chris, why don't we have him hop on with us? They're into this or big time, whatever. And they'll be maybe they'll be guests. Maybe there won't. But, you know, it's going to be fun. You're going to get you need a content on both channels now. And I feel really good about it because I never wanted to feel like I had ownership of this. And I never wanted people to have the impression that I had ownership of this. That's not why I like doing stuff like a podcast. It's it's supposed to be like it's supposed to be equal. So I'm I'm really happy about this, but I, I'm really happy that, uh, you know, Nick was good to the idea because God knows if we started a new channel. I don't have the time to to put like I really don't. But neither of us do. It's like I'm busy. I keep myself so occupied with a thousand things. I do not have the time to try to push and get every one of you guys to go sub to that channel. Oh, it'd just be a nightmare. Then I'd feel the comp the compulsion to want to put all those episodes back on the new channel. Mm -hmm. And that, you know how long that would take me? Fucking days. Wait, but, like that's fuck, man. It's just so this this way. You know, we'll still get more people, maybe people that haven't gone to Nick's channel, the Lost River Drive-In, go there because you're going to get Unita content there as well. Even Check if you hate video. everything else I do, you'll get extra Unita content over there. So it's worth it. <laughs> Even if and you hate me, if you yes, hate everything I do, you'll get <laughs> extra, you'll get extra Christian. So like <laughs> in that way, it's worth it. But uh, yeah, and and I, I do not keep myself as regularly scheduled as Christian does with uploads regular. I, I upload, I, I definitely upload at least once or twice a week. And, and I usually do one live stream a week. Some weeks it's more, some weeks it's less. It just depends. Like I didn't have anything in the can before I went on vacation. And I was like, and the night before I was like, should I record a couple things and like edit them and, and, you know, schedule them to drop on certain days. I was like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to take a break while I'm on vacation and I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but yeah, you will get content over there, but more importantly, you'll get more you need a content. So if, if you guys haven't checked out my channel two plus years later, please do throw a, throw, throw a subscribe by yeah. the way. So it's a win-win. I think the audience is like, okay, this is not going to, for most of the audience, they're like, okay, cool. I don't, I don't, I go here and I go there. I don't have to go to a new channel. It's got, then I have to worry about the algorithm bringing it to me. I have to miss stuff. It's a win-win. So yes, there's that. And the Unita Horror Podcast melts are coming with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre drop. That'll be, it's either Saturday, Sunday, or Monday at the latest. You're listening to this right now. If you're, if you're a badass and watch it when it drops, that'll be this week within five to seven days of the drop of this episode. So know that I'm just trying to get all this out, Nick, before we get into everything. So I you're good. You're good. I'm sending, I'm right now. I'm sending Rudy the, uh, the, the ideas you gave me for my wax melt. And I want okay. his opinion. Cause I think I know which way I'm leaning. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So yeah, guys, so a lot of great stuff coming. Um, we've, we've seen a lot. We've seen a lot of stuff that spirit Halloween has announced this year. Exorcist believer, a bunch of stuff we're going to get into. So I just wanted to make sure right up in the front, 
because I don't want to talk about this in the end of the episode where the average person maybe says, oh, I got to go. I can't finish this. Mm -hmm. Then they maybe not hear it. That's why I'm just I'm dumping all this information right now. Huge dump. Um, Massive dumps. So there it is, guys. I think that's about it. So just know, you know, more you need of content will be on Nick's channel, live stream shows, which we'll we'll talk about when the next we'll try to do one possibly this week if we can. And he'll create his event. That way you can see it on YouTube and stuff. I'll I'll share it out myself all that so i think that's everything i have dump wise i just dump <laughs> everything out so so there's christian's dump uh we're about to get into something else that a lot of people are calling a dump uh but before we do that i would be remiss if i did not mention the cinematic event this weekend that is barbenheimer uh we've talked about it before Christian and I have talked about this in the podcast with Lee, with Piz, with, with, with each other, just over and over again. It, I didn't even make a tweet about it because I'm literally getting sick of saying it. But as, as of today, Barbie did 20, almost $23 million in previews last night. And Oppenheimer did 10 and a half million, both of them beating expectations. Oppenheimer's looking to open between 80 and a hundred million. Barbie is going to open to 150 million plus Jesus. in their opening weekends. And the U S box office for the first time in years is going to have a weekend of over $300 million in tickets sold. So as I will say again, I'm going to see them both Sunday. I got back last night. I did not have time Friday or Saturday because I work all day today and all day tomorrow. But since I won't have my son Sunday, I have my showing for Barbie at noon and then my showing for Oppenheimer at 2.45. I'm not yeah. even leaving the theater. Yep, I will be there until probably about 6 o'clock. Um, and uh, I'm excited for it. And I'll do a video on my channel or whatever about both movies. But uh, again... Uh, it, I guess I should just really just say, like, I know that was a lot. That was long winded, but the box office is fine. People will go see movies if these movies are well marketed, well reviewed and just shit people want to see. Um, we keep hearing about the death of the movie theater. And then you see these two movies come out yeah. literally up against each other. And they're both crushing expectations. It. Movies are in a very, very, very good spot. Just stop spending three hundred million dollars on them. I guess that's that's my st that's my piece right there. Yeah, I would agree. It, and you would almost say to yourself, "That's shouldn't that be fairly obvious?" It's just like, of course, these dude. Th what movie needs to have three? I mean, there are exceptions, but like, what movie needs to have three hundred million dollars? spent on it i mean if you can't get something really good with like 30 or 40 million what the fuck are you doing 300 million yeah that's ridiculous yeah uh, i think barbie's global opening is projected to be between 300 and 330 million global this weekend which is tr more than triple its budget in its opening weekend the movie's already in the black it's already in the black Incredible. Mean meanwhile you have a movie like uh, we've talked about just an example, Indiana Jones, $400 million when everything was said and done spent on that movie, you needed to make at least eight, like 900. Eight, million, yeah, yeah. And it just, I mean, it's ridiculous. Dude, it's not enough people in the world. <laughs> no, are you kidding me? Not enough people that want to see an 81 year old Harrison Ford. That's for sure. Um, it just breaks my heart. I love Harrison so much. So, so do much. I, but yay, Christian, I believe I read he got 30 million for this movie. So good for him. Good for him. Cash in, make, <laughs> get that last indie payday. Set your grandkids oh, you up. Think, you think this is the last one? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, it's it's just like it's just like with uh, Star Wars Episode Seven. He was like, yeah, I, I think it was more like I don't want to do this, and they were like, please kill me. <laughs> and he's like, okay, pay me a shitload of money and do something to make it to where I can never come back again. And they were like, okay. And so, I mean, he cashed in on Star Wars and Indy again in his late seventies, early eighties. Yeah, two roles he probably never thought he'd be able to cash in. He probably made close to a hundred million dollars coming back for both of those movies. That's a win for Harrison, absolutely. Like, good for you. Take that money. Yeah, I, I hope we see the next era of those. It's a different breed of actor, like that, like Harrison, Tom Cruise. They're they can do it all, but those legacy action guys that become great characters and stuff. I mean, I hope, I hope in 10, 20 years we'll have that next 
curation of those guys that have gone the distance and they're still doing. I think a great action star can be thriving in his late forties and stuff like that. I mean, especially now when you look back at the, a lot of the stuff Stallone and Arnie did dude, they were considered dinosaurs in the mid nineties, but they were still cranking out in my opinion, fucking classics. I mean, when Arnie did T2, he was like 40, 43, 42, 43. Dude, Tom so, Cruise is 61. I know. And I, that's actually young. I, I keep thinking he's supposed to be a lot older, but I forget. Like, he was very, very young when he got into acting. And, you know, the, the human body today, it's incredible. I mean, obviously, he's got money, but you can't bullshit health, exercise, good, you know, good diet. And he moves like a 30 year old. He's Tom Cruise is great. I, I, I love him too. And, I heard he was he was going to be the guy that was going to be meeting with some of these studios in in in, in a relationship to all the the picketing and the boycotting going on. Like he was supposed to be kind of like talking to the studios about solutions they can have, but they keep blowing them off. That's well, it's heard. it's it's he it's tricky for him because he's a producer and an actor. So as part of SAG, technically, like he would be on strike and whatnot. But as right. a producer, he works with these execs. So yeah. he's like caught between a rock and a hard place. So he was willing. He said he would do – he openly said he would do everything he could to help them. But mm -hmm. then he was asked to pick it with them. And he said, I don't know. He didn't say yes. He didn't say no. He just said, I don't know. Um, so he was noncommittal about that. And some people were like, what the fuck, Tom Cruise? Like if, if you pick it. You know, your face on the front lines there is really going to help our cause. It's really going to get attention to us. And while that is absolutely true, he's also a producer of with the with, I mean, large amounts of money tied to his films, Mission Impossible, Top Gun, movies that make a shitload of money. Like he can't. It could he technically probably stand yeah. at the picket line? Yes. Is it a horrible look for him as a producer and could affect? his bottom dollar as well. Yes. So I, I give him credit for saying he'll do anything and everything he can. He actually had a meeting a month ago with some of these studios. I believe oh, he, it was yeah. he already had a meeting about how they needed to listen to these actors and these writers demands, take them seriously and find some common ground here. And they blew him off. So he's been doing what he can without muddying the waters too much. But at the end of the day, guys, it, this can't last. You know it. I know it. Everybody listening knows it. These studios, even if they were ready to move on to AI, it's not ready yet. It's just not ready for what they would want it to do. Um, and dear God, I hope it never even gets to that point. But they can't afford this. I saw something that Netflix took like an $18 billion hit uh, over the last few weeks or something like that. And I don't know if it was like profits or, or market share or something like you're going to start seeing those dominoes fall. Paramount's going to take a huge hit. Well, Warner people Brothers. are canceling Netflix or no, I, I don't think it, I don't know if it was necessarily that I, it might've been investment in stocks. It might've been uh partnerships, it, it, whatever it might be a culmination of things, yeah. but they're all starting to depreciate in value because the market, I mean, wall street looks at this and goes, you're no, you're not worth as much as you were a week ago. Cause you have nothing in the pipeline anymore. You have right. nothing coming out. Nobody's going to invest in you because you're not making movies. So no thanks. So, you know, and you don't, you don't have to comment on this, Nick, if you don't want to, unless you don't care. But like, I've seen a lot of people talk about if you support SAG, you should not be going to the movie theaters right now, boycott this and that, but a 24 is okay. Cause they're completely independent. A 24 met SAG's demands. That's why. They already oh, they, they did. A twenty four made a what deal. What am I saying? Yeah, yeah. independent Screen Actors Guild people still. Act uh, no, yeah. Well, it, it's not even just because they're independent. The reason that they're still able to work with A twenty four is because A twenty four agreed to all of SAG's terms. So everything SAG wanted for their actors, A twenty four said, "You got it." So A twenty four is paying them much better. They're they're meeting with benefits, everything. They're doing everything for those actors. Right. So like tomorrow, Warner Brothers could come out and say, "We've agreed to terms with SAG." then okay. Warner Brothers could start making movies again, but Paramount mm -hmm. couldn't or, or Disney couldn't. You know what I mean? So it's it's that's the first domino to fall was A24. And I saw a tweet that went viral. I saw it today that was like, if A24, which is a small studio in comparison to these other ones, can afford to pay all of these actors and writers and meet their demands, how the fuck can Warner Brothers, Disney, Paramount, how can they not do it? They can. They just don't want to. 
I mean, you gotta imagine a lot of stuff that they're worried about. It's not just money, but like I, I know a lot of it's probably residuals, residuals, and things like that, which is just so such a it's just a big cloud. But like I imagine some of the stuff is just like provisional. Like, no, you not have fucking permission to to uh, to you know use my fucking likeness as an as an AI in in ten years or twenty years when I'm dead and shit like that. Or if they do, yeah, anytime you you use anything in terms of AI in, in regards to me, you're paying me big time. You know, Crispin Glover had a big, big lawsuit about that with Back to the Future 2. Because I was a kid, I didn't realize that that wasn't Crispin. Yep. They they had a mold of him from the first movie because they D8. They made him old with old makeup. So they, they took a mold of Crispin and put it on an actor and put him upside down to fool people and had a close voice actor. And he sued those guys because he was like, you used my likeness without my permission. That's theft. And he got he won. But Crispin was very vocal about that. So I imagine Crispin Glover is probably really, you know, being like he probably to, to me, I think Crispin's probably saying I knew this shit was going to come back and rear its head again one day because yep. they pulled this you shit see, in 89 <laughs> with yeah. him. Do you see what James Cameron said? I tried to warn everybody in 1991 and none of you listened to me <laughs> about uh, AI and wow. shit. Yeah. I mean, he, he said it know. tongue in cheek, but he wasn't, he also wasn't kidding. Yeah. He was like, God, James Cameron, man. I'll tell you what, that guy's a national treasure. I mean, a national treasure. Um, but yeah, Bruce, yeah. Far- wrong. I love old James Cameron. I I knew I, I still haven't seen Avatar or Avatar 2. Believe it or not, I actually kind of want to watch them. But I said to you, not that you disagree with me, but I said he's gonna prove people wrong with this goddamn Avatar 2. Watch it, it's gonna make the money. And people are like, what do you Avatar 2? Wasn't that 2009 when the first one came out? I'm like, watch it. He's going to make the money. All he does is prove people wrong. I love James Cameron. Yeah, made like two and a half billion dollars. He's the man. He's the fucking man. That guy, God, he's probably got so much money. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, it's. Yeah. So as far as that stuff goes, this can't last. It's I believe the the word I heard, I was actually talking to our buddy Akeem about it today, right. you know, cause he's on the ground with it. And I just wanted to find out the, the climate uh, of where things stand right now. And he was basically like the studio still won't talk to us. They're, they're just, they're, they're basically saying you're going to fold before we fold. And I really do think the writers and the actors are saying, watch, um, I don't think they're going to fold, nor do I think they should. And I've seen some really corny ass takes about this, Christian. And I made a video last week on my channel about it. You know, people that haven't educated themselves fully on the subject. And I, it, and, you know, admittedly, I had neither until this, these strikes happened. And then I really looked into it. You know, people are going, well, why should we care about these millionaires? And dude, like 90% of them aren't millionaires. No, like, they're not. It's like, it no, is like, a no, actors and writers is what you're yes, referring to. Yeah. Yes. Like, we always overinflate that profession because of the top 10%, but 85 to 90% of these people, they make middle-class wages. Like they're, they're, they're not getting jobs all the time. And when they get jobs, they're not getting paid a hundred million dollars like Tom Cruise did for Top Gun. It's just right. not a thing. And <clears throat> what they're saying is you don't need to pay us like that, but you have to pay us better. Like it's just, if you went to school, Christian, you spent $80,000 to get a degree to be an actor or a writer or a director, whatever it may be. And then you have to move out to LA because that's where the business is. And the cost of living in LA is a lot more expensive than in Ohio or in Louisiana. Why? Because a shitload of people want to go there for that exact reason. So the cost of living is higher. Okay. If you're, li- if you're, you spent all that money on school, you got your degree, you moved to that area to work in that profession. And they're like, all right, you signed two deals this year. You sold two scripts. We bought them both for $15,000. Good day's work for you. $30,000 in a year in Hollywood, California. Does anyone think? I mean, if you just make $30,000 a year in the Midwest, you're pretty much living paycheck to paycheck. Imagine what that's like. Then taxes, then 10% for the agent. (laughs) You're 16 grand, brother. And then, yeah. it's crazy because and I, I can't tell you how many times, too, I've watched actors and in interviews and stuff like that. that look at this stuff with, with uh, this is why they like they have had some jumps like there have been writers that worked as hot for hire, which was a big thing with Victor Miller and stuff that act, man. So writers can own their screenplay again Dude, they get screwed out of residuals. They don't make money when um, 
you know, the DVD sales come through, the VHS, like they get screwed out of money. The residuals, I would have to imagine, would be the biggest thing. Imagine writing, imagine writing Stranger Things, and it gets purchased. <clears throat> but like, dude, all of a sudden you go to Target. Oh my God, there's T-shirts of this. You know what? I I wrote yeah. this. Do I get paid for this? They get screwed out of that stuff, and. You know, whether they sign contracts for it or not, it's just, is it right? That's the question I think that we have to ask ourselves. Is it right? And, you know, I feel for these people. Fight for your, fight for what you're worth and uh, screw that, screw the people that, you know, that, you know, I'm uneducated myself, but guess what? I keep my mouth shut. <laughs> That's that's a yeah. very that's a very uh, rare trait in today's world. You know, I if I don't know much about something, I just don't I don't say anything. <laughs> well, I think a tell I think a telltale sign is that when you see these people that are well off, that are stars in this industry, you know, having the backs of these people, that should tell you that it's a just cause. Like yeah. when you have people like James Cameron, Jamie Lee Curtis, Tom Cruise saying this is bullshit. Like, why do they care? They're all worth hundreds of millions of dollars. They don't give a shit, right? No, they care because they work in the industry. They see it firsthand and they, they say, this it. is bullshit. Yeah. It. Like it, it, it is absolutely bullshit. So yeah, eat the rich and all that. But Christian, buddy, buddy, buddy. Um, you got any plans October 13th? <laughs> yeah, it's my anniversary. What are you my doing? my wedding anniversary. <laughs> We're going to see exorcists, <laughs> believe the exorcist believer. So uh, if you uh, find ladies and gentlemen have been able to venture to the theater yet this weekend to see Oppenheimer, you would have seen the exorcist trailer playing in front of Oppenheimer. Yeah. Um, and uh, it has created quite a discourse online. The posters were officially released by Blumhouse. We're going to kind of go through these one by one and we're going to talk about it, but yeah, I'll get them pulled up while we're, yeah. while we're bringing, we're getting this talked about. So I, uh, I have a feeling, and guys, this is kind of our shtick on this show. I feel like I'm a little bit more forgiving to some things. And I feel like Christian sometimes is not. And I think that this is going to be one of those times where Christian is going to railroad the fuck out of this. And okay. I'm here for it. And I respect it. Uh, I'm just going to, I guess, try to offer a difference of opinion a little bit, maybe. <laughs> um, but I will say from what I've seen, not overly thrilled. Not super optimistic. Not going to say that. Um, but yeah, Christian, so those posters dropped. Uh, what did you think? Well, let's have a look. So here's one of them. Um, and you can kind of see the other ones on the Google Sheet screen right here, guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, I I like the black and white aesthetic to be fair but um they look like little little reagan knockoffs to me and um fair i i don't know nick because you know we talked about this but well, i'll stay on topic for now because i know we'll talk about the trailer but it's about what i would expect I, this is what i would expect from like blumhouse in terms of marketing so it's it's really not it's it's more just like a oh yeah that makes sense this what what else was i expecting you know i'm expecting this this beautiful shot you know you always have your high hopes of this like what we have as our background for this that beautiful shot of this guy looking up like oh my god what am i about to get myself into that makes you imagine you know this is letting you know guess what there's going to be little kids getting possessed in this movie boom right ahead like dude what if they would have done something what if a dude would have got possessed what if a, what if a a fucking you know, like like an uh, uh, like a guy got possessed, or what if it was I don't know something else, like a mom, like Evil Dead, but whatever. No, here we go. We just know that this is basically gonna be like the first movie. It's gonna be you know these girls, little girls getting possessed again. So I I don't get overly enthusiastic seeing these posters. Doesn't matter because I've I'm always smart enough to know I'm going to see it anyway. But um, it's not it's not the biggest glowing. Uh, I'm not, it doesn't make me say, holy fuck, here we go. <laughs> That's what I take away from it. it it's, it, I'm not really even sad. It's just, it's Blumhouse. That's Blumhouse. That's, that's, that's what I think about it. That's Blumhouse. That's like my overarching thought. So for me, uh, yeah, dude, they, 
I don't even know. Okay, so I'll say points for uh, creativity, kind of, because Christian, how many times has Christian talked on this podcast about how he's sick and tired of movie posters nowadays just being 15 different floating heads? And, and with the title, it's so unoriginal. There's no ingenuity to it whatsoever. So points for a little bit of creativity there. Um, you're obviously showing us a scene that you're probably expecting to be iconic from the movie or hoping it is iconic from the movie. Yeah. You've obviously pulled out all the color, whatever. I, I, I walked away from it. It's fine. It's fine. I don't dislike, nor do I like them. Um, if I bought a poster for this movie, I'd probably go fan made at this point, unless they come out with a new one. And there's no guarantee I'm ever going to get a poster of this movie. Got to see the movie first. Um, but yeah, it's fine. I mean, I walk away from it going, yeah, whatever. Um, nothing, nothing to really write home about. Now, as far as the possession angle, it's, it's this is one thing that I, I, I and I want to hear your opinion on this because I do get annoyed by this when people are like. I've seen the discourse over the past couple of days on Twitter about it. It's like, oh, well, it's probably just going to be like every other possession movie. It's just another exorcism movie, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. The exorcist is allowed to do that, though, because it was really the first one of its kind. So if you're like, oh, my God, this reminds me of The Conjuring or this reminds me of Annabelle or Insidious. That's because all those movies ripped The Exorcist off. Like, full stop, let's just call it what it is. So if an Exorcist sequel is coming and you see a movie that looks like a quote-unquote exorcism movie, oh, your typical, that's not the Exorcist's fault. I mean, I guess it is in a way because it was made, so all these movies wanted to be like it. But it's pretty genre films the way Night of the Living Dead did. Yes. So, and and how many, like, are we really going to hold that against the Exorcist that it was so <laughs> influential that it created a bunch of copycats? No. Halloween did the same thing. And how many of you motherfuckers like Friday the 13th more or Nightmare on Elm Street more. Or, I mean, go down the line. Like, so I just, I just want to say that, like, I cannot hold that against the exorcist. The exorcist is the exorcist and it is allowed to do this exorcism thing because it really started and pioneered it. So, but as far as that goes, the posters, whatnot, cool. Great. Now I'll preface the, we're going to talk about the trailer now and I'll preface by saying I have not seen this in high quality yet. Um, I only saw it on Twitter. Somebody uploaded it like from a cell phone recording from the movie theater. Right. Uh, me too, a, me too. Yeah, that's where you saw it too. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I believe the first few seconds weren't there because what, as soon as I started watching, it was already like kind of into one of the scenes. So right. haven't seen the full trailer. Haven't experienced it with the sound, with the HD quality, none of that. But I watched it today. Christian, what did you think? I have to comment on what you just said. You said that you should not hold it against a, a legitimate exorcist film because of all the fatigue and stuff like that. That's not something I, I, I think you're it's, it's, I, I hear you. I hear you. Um, but then I, I look at it at a different angle too. It's like the exorcist is, is one of the most original films ever. And it spurred off this subgenre of films. And, you know, when I watched that trailer, I got to be honest, I just felt like that. I'm sorry. I really just felt like, oh, God, I haven't even given you I haven't given you my opinion on it. yet. OK, so I'm just OK, because I, I just want to like what you're saying. Yeah. I get it. It's like I, I get it. You know, you're right. But to me, it's just like I look at it in another aspect too. like. The fact of the matter is the exorcist was incredibly original and it spurred off this whole subgenre of kids getting fucking possessed. And watching that trailer, I got to be honest, man. I said to myself, here we go. Another pretzel bending kid possession movie. And I really didn't like it. Yeah, so um, I'll just say I was not. I was I was pretty muted on it myself. Uh, believe it or not, some of you guys probably were expecting you know, me teeing it up to be like, I fucking loved it. No, yeah. I felt like I made that point about not holding it against the exorcist, but I wasn't finished because I wanted to get to after we talked about how we felt about the trailer. Yeah. Having said that, watching this trailer, 
I feel like they leaned into more of what you expect from your prototypical exorcism movie than the exorcist itself. Um, I don't know if it has the style or the tone. And I'll tell you one thing, there was a moment in the trailer that I was genuinely like, oh, come on. And it was when the girl is in the church saying the body Same. and the blood, the body Same. and the blood. I was like, what Same. the fuck is this? This is not the exorcist. This is not the exorcist. Like, did Reagan go out into town in the first? No, no, it was contained to the house. Yeah. All the horrors happened there. The atrocities happened there. People came there to experience the atrocities. Yet in this movie, we're going to have a scene where the little girl goes to a church and in front of mass is just saying prototypical, what seems like Danny McBride, vanilla fucking milk toast, huh? Something demonic to say in a church. Oh, the body and the blood. Yeah, let's repeat it 15 times. Fucking dumb. Now, really like to see Ella Burstyn in it. And I I thought what I saw of her, she looked like she was acting well. I didn't I, know she I, was alive. <laughs> yeah. She was, but like I, I thought she looked like she could still act. I loved the rendition of Tubular Bells that they were putting onto the uh, trailer. It would just yeah. be like the first couple notes and then it would stop. And then right. it would, I was like, right. that, that's pretty cool. Um, I think the makeup effects look good. That's Chris Nelson. I mean, I have no doubt the makeup effects are going to be good. But just like so many modern horror trailers, the last 20 seconds is a montage of just shot, 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 bam, 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 bam. Wow, look how crazy and insane this is. Yeah. And I just don't think that's The Exorcist. Um, no, you, dude, think yeah. about it. That movie made a fucking door, a closed door, be the scariest goddamn thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not saying you need – look. I'm not saying, like I say it as a joke, you know, I'm not saying you need William Peter Blatty or you need William Friedkin, but I don't know, dude. I'm going to see it. So I don't want to be like, fuck this piece of shit. Blah, blah, it's going to make a shitload of money too. I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to see it, but Nick, I, I, I really, I'm relieved to be honest with you because I didn't want you to be like, because I felt like I'm, I felt like I'm saying exactly what you were criticizing a second ago because I hear you. This is the exorcist. You know, but didn't you love time, how I teed that up? I teed you up to think that I was gonna fucking pray. I did it on I purpose. Touche. It's just, dude, like, and I, it's like, you've got this original movie. You've got a under underwhelming sequel, another entry that somehow you you realized it's not just William Freakin. It was to me, it was William Peter Blatty all along. Mm -hmm. Granted, he had to add in a bunch of stupid shit on that director's cut, which fucking every terrible. everybody everybody prefers the theatrical cut mm -hmm. to the exorcist i think but you fucking dude, better you know and shout out that's getting a 4k this year guys but oh yeah you know i can you believe it took almost 50 years for a fucking 4k it had to be almost 50 years old uh yeah you know i think freaking has to approve a lot of that stuff too and he's he's got a lot of problems right now with some of his other movies trying to get 4ks so i he he's He's a strange guy. I like freaking, but he's a mean son of a bitch. But oh, yeah, I just I'm real. I was really sad because I feel like this. It it almost looks like a fucking not a zombie film, but in the in the in the way that the the evil is just going around now. But mm -hmm. dude, the, the thought of walking up the fact that a movie from 1973 can make a shot of a fucking door and the way the camera creeps up. It's like, oh my god! It's like I mean no disrespect uh, to Danny McBride and and David Gordon Green as human beings. Uh, I I just think that they were they are not, and I say this like, to you and every other Halloween fan respectfully. Ha the Halloween is not The Exorcist. Fuck no, it's not. John Carpenter is not William Freakin. No, that's just. In my opinion, that's just facts. Halloween is my favorite movie of all time, but I would sit here and tell you objectively, I think The Exorcist is a better movie. I, I just fair. I agree. I agree. I agree. And I just think that this was one area that I'm going to see it and I'm going to go in to, to try to enjoy a movie. Who the fuck, want, you know? But yeah, dude, I got to say, I was pretty, pretty sad 
watching it because I was like, I can't believe it. Like, I really thought this was going to be it. I was going to say, holy shit, that this was scary, scary. It was subtle, creepy music. And you might hear something, but no, it's just a fucking trailer with kids running around saying stupid shit with makeup on their face. And I am pretty bummed out. Let me, let me just say guys, um, I am still ambivalent on this movie. I'm looking forward to it because I'm just so intrigued of what this final product is going to be. Like I, and I want to see how, I want to see how Linda Blair factors into this. Like I, so yeah, yeah. I'm intrigued in that way. Um, so I, I, I'm going to see it and I want to see it, but I'm pretty ambivalent expectation wise. I'm not going into this with high hopes. I'm really, really not. Uh, and, but I feel like there's, there's this line that gets drawn sometimes that people think that, you know, standing on the fence with something means that you are defending it. I am not doing that. I have not seen the movie. I don't know if it's a pile of shit yet. I don't know. But Christian, you can attest to this. Yeah. How many terrible movies have you seen great trailers to? How many great movies have you seen bad trailers to? How many times does a marketing department in your life throw together a trailer with a bunch of jump cuts because they think it's going to really juice up the bu- the, the intrigue of a movie. And then you go see the movie and you're like, the it's movie wasn't like that at all. One of the biggest examples I can think of was early 2020 when um, The Grudge, I thought that that trailer was phenomenal. And you got to and see the shot of the girl coming out the bathtub. Not good. And I needed a fucking pen and pencil watching the movie. Okay, what year is this? Oh, shit another flashback fuck and yeah. then like it just seemed it was very stereotypical of people getting their fingers cut c- creepy kids walking like nobody is scared of these fucking kids getting possessed anymore and the fact that reagan was contained to that bed and couldn't move you had no idea what she was capable of that's the difference dude i would fucking punt one of these kids in this movie <laughs> just like i, I I don't, this isn't it, man. Like, you know, the scariest thing about the exorcist to me, what's that? Is that Reagan is, you know, tied to this bed and bound to her room. Mm -hmm. So you think throughout that entire movie, I'm sitting here every time I watch it, it gets under my skin because I'm like, how the fuck is Chris McNeil okay with being under the same roof with this thing? upstairs and how does she know that it's just not going to break loose she's in the shower the demon's in the fucking bathroom with her she's taking a shit i mean you have not like you don't know and that is so scary to me because they contained it to that fucking house and even though that that kid is tied to that bed at no point as a viewer are you going well don't worry she's up in the room no because they made that door so fucking scary you're always hearing noises in there. You don't know if at any moment she could come out. Now, I'm going to say, we do not know if they have not done something similar at points throughout this yeah. movie. We yeah. don't know that. Yeah. Um, we could have seen two minutes of a 15-minute climax of a two-and-a-half-hour-long movie. We don't know. Now, and maybe two hours of this movie are going to be suspenseful, character-driven, and really make and slow burn. And maybe you're going to be sitting in that theater going, oh, my God, they actually made a decent movie. And then maybe the end is just going to be this hodgepodge of bullshit. And you'll walk away from the movie going, if you didn't have that final act, that would have been a damn solid movie. That could be the case here. Yeah. Um, That's how I felt about Candyman. Yeah. Like when the guys, then the guy like all of a sudden, like the. Dude, it's, yeah. All that was was on the cutting room floor. Yeah. It was supposed to be longer, but Universal was like trim this movie down. So yeah, it was just like, oh, everything was great until the end. And then like the, the that one dude that worked at the laundromat just did something random, like cut his yeah, cut his, his arm off. Forgot. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, man, mm-hmm. he didn't need that. And then the ending mm-hmm. with Tony Todd, spoiler alert, you jackass. This, I haven't seen it, but I was like, oh, Chris, that would have been perfect. I would I would have gave that movie like a like an A, but I, I think I gave it like a B because like, ah, oh, is that one part? The end, yeah, the ending was rushed. But I'm again, dude, will you be like, honestly, tell me the truth. Okay. Could you see yourself watching 75 to 80% of this movie? You're in the theater and you're going, this isn't half bad. And then the end just 
fucking it all up for you? Like, could you see that as a real possibility? Sure. I mean, I know people that would describe that as the village <laughs> or, uh, which I love that movie, but, um, fuck yeah. that movie after that ending. Oh, I love that movie, dude. Um, it's a great movie until the reveal. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if there's like, I always wondered what, what if there is a group of people out there somewhere doing that shit, <laughs> living hey. colonial times. Hey. I, mean, I guess it's called the uh, SDL. What was that church that uh, Warren Jeffs had? That nasty, sick bastard. Oh, mm -hmm. dude, the, the the Church of Latter Day Saints. It's like a compound in like Utah uh, or that's something. Mormons. Yeah, the Mormon, dude. Oh, dude, that dude's in jail finally. But like he was, I don't even talk about well, it. Well, no, <laughs> we, we don't. We I, no, I'm not. Af I'm not afraid to lose our Mormon viewers. You guys are fucking crazy. Like, <laughs> well, that guy. I mean, this guy was the devil, man. Like he, he literally, like the women couldn't cut their hair. They, they. That's what. That's what I should. I should ver. I should clarify. The old school Mormonism, you know, the LDS type shit is in Latter Day Saint. Yeah, dude, he yeah. was married. He had like fifty wives. Yes, <laughs> and it's some of them were like kids. Insane. Yeah, but, and and there's a, there's a show on Hulu called Under the Banner of Heaven, which is yeah, about a real mer yeah with Andrew Garfield. It's amazing. Like okay. I love that yeah. show. Anyway, guys, we we, just, we went from the village to talking about the Mormon uh, church, uh, but it's possible. And guess what? I I have no problem admitting that if I watch the movie and I say. You know what? Uh, the pizza was great. I just didn't like the crust at the end. Like, I'll say that. Yeah. You know? Well, the reason I ask you is because, and and I I, I really don't even think, I'm just going to say it. There are definitely people that made their mind up about this movie when they heard that David Gordon Green was directing a sequel to The Exorcist. They will not allow themselves to go in open-minded at all. I have seen people talk about the trailer, talk about the posters, talk about the movie in general and say, looks fucking terrible. Absolutely awful. That trailer was competent. Like it looks like a competent movie. Like it doesn't look so like, fuck, that's not Jeepers Creepers 3's trailer. Like let's like we, at some point our bias has to be removed a little bit and go, you can say it looks generic as fuck. But like, don't sit here and tell me that that looked like someone just threw a turd on the screen for two minutes. Like, no, it, I, I I totally agree with you. My thing, it's not even David Gordon Green. I actually think, and I still stand. I don't think he's the guy to hand it over to. No, the fact of the matter is, he made a lot of money with those Halloween films for Universal. That's fine, but I think he can make a pretty damn good film. My thing is, is you know, fucking cheeseburger, motherfucker, Danny McBride writing The Exorcist. That's my thing. That's where I have a lot of criticism for. And I think my criticism is sound at this point after listening to the audio on that trailer with some of those kids. I, yes, I, no, I, I, I think, I think David's a, is a good director. It seems, I, I mean, who am I to say? I'm not an actor, but you listen to Jamie Lee Curtis and all these people say he sounded like Rob Zombie. They all said he's chill. He knows what he wants. We shoot it, we get it done. It's no, no, no anger. Everything's chill. He's probably a fantastic director in terms of dealing with actors and his movies look good. He probably has a great team around him. My thing is just, dude, Danny McBride wrote the exorcist believer. Like he wrote it. This guy wrote something based off of what the great William Peter Blatty wrote. Yeah. Like, holy that's fucking shit. Wild. It, that's, wild. that's where my, and I think that's fair. I was just, it's just like, wow. But no, Man. another example, Christian, of a super misleading trailer. Just going to say it. Halloween ends. Yeah. I, th I was thinking about that earlier, you know, especially looking back because before we're all just saying to ourselves, it seemed like we kind of figured it out, but all, all of us were saying, oh, it's a copycat admirer. It's like, it's going to be a mystery of who the, but the trailer is. didn't show that at all. No, but the, but, but the super fans are pausing the phone. Oh no, thing. we like, knew. We, yeah, we knew, but it was just like when the like, trailer came out, it was like, is this just going to be Jamie versus Michael for an hour and a half? Cause that's what right. it seemed like. Oh yeah. But people were doing that Leonardo DiCaprio gif. <laughs> He's got his fingers right there. <laughs> yep. Whoa, whoa. I, was one, I was one of those people, but I, you know, I, yeah, I, I couldn't help myself from looking into it months ahead of time, but Nick, really quick. Let me just say this before you say, you it, but regardless, this is my favorite time to do podcasts. This is my favorite time to be a horror fan because the buildup, I, I enjoy watching people bid themselves up like this because they're the ones that have to live with it when the movie comes out. And now you, because you can listen to 
and vice versa. You can listen to somebody say this movie's not going to be that bad. And then they come out of the studio, they come out of the movie and they really like it. And you just have to wonder, I can't believe this motherfucker. And then you can also hear people say, this looks fucking disgusting. This looks God awful. And there's a chance like these people, you, if there's a chance these people may not think it's that bad, but then they can't say it. They can't say it because they bid themselves up so much. So I enjoy watching that. I think it's, you know, I, I, I love it. I just think it's funny. I, I love watching people just be so like vocal about it. It's just like, they're the ones saying it. it I, is. I, it's I just, hilarious. But my problem, Christian, is the dis, the disingenuine nature behind some of it. And I, I guess I shouldn't really give a fuck about certain people's personalities and, and their stances yeah. on certain things. Like that's your life. Like live your life. I don't care. But I just know, I know there are people, this movie could turn out to be solid. Let's just say solid. It could get an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics, 85% audience score. I'm not saying it will, but I'm saying it could. And those people, and it could be undeniably better than Dominion, The Beginning, and The Heretic. And the certain people will still go, piece of shit. Fucking terrible. And why? Because they made their mind up long ago. And I think Halloween ends, I don't think, I know this. I know this. I'm talking to some of you right now. Halloween ends colored your opinion of David Gordon Green. Well, you will never, ever support anything this man does again. You won't. I, I fucking know it. I see it on the internet, Christian. I, I see it. People David Green ruined Halloween. I'm so glad they, you were saying that instead of Rob Zombie now. <laughs> dude, oh my God. They hate him now. There are people that hate him and they want to see him fail. So they're rooting for this movie to be bad. And I have always felt that is such a corny way to live life. No, Whether a movie sucks. Be, yeah. If you say a movie's bad, is if like, I think this could be bad, but to say, I hope the movie fails or it's bad. It's just like, okay. What does it like, change wanted, about your life? I wanted the cuties to, to fail on Netflix. <laughs> You know, yeah. like, <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? It's so corny. Like when we talk about this, when we parse this out. You laugh because you're like, this is pe fucking. I, people want people want that attention. I think to say. I know, like, but it's just so annoying. It's like it's literally Christian. It, it, every time I see somebody do something like that, mm -hmm. I literally want to go. I want to hold up a doll and say, show me on the doll where David Gordon Green touched you. Like, <laughs> seriously, because you hate him so fucking much because he made a movie you didn't like. Like, get the fuck over it. There you are directors. Nick, I, I, Nick I, I think, yeah, I think this. some of this stuff may be the most important thing in people's lives. And I don't know, I'm just making excuses for it at this point. But like, it's yeah, like, because when you actually think about it as a practical human being, you're like, y'all lost some fucking marbles, dude. Like, like yeah, I, I, like I, in my life, you know, I watched the trailer and I tell Sydney about it and she was like, can I see it? And I watched it and we, she was like, what do you think? And she said the same thing. So she's like, I don't know, Christian, it looks like it's another, another exorcism movie, even though it's called the exorcist, it looks like another exorcism movie. What do you want for dinner tomorrow? Like, that was it. Like, that's that we moved on from that but like yeah some people i've seen i've seen this is why i don't like facebook because for summer in facebook like do they have echo chamber groups yes on there validate um, me please validate what i'm saying yeah, yeah I, I just i don't do that no so i like to put myself out there on the internet get my opinion out there and have mm -hmm. conversations but like, i don't need an echo chamber God no. knows that the You Need a Horror Podcast does not have an echo chamber. No. So I'm going to make a promise to you listeners. Oh, I'm going to say something and then I'm going to make a promise to you guys. Whether Christian likes it or not, we're doing Go ahead. it. So one, do not misconstrue anything Christian and I or I have said. Neither one of us is overly thrilled about the marketing material for The Exorcist. Neither one mm -hmm. of us has high hopes for the movie. Right. I'm I'm just simply trying to play devil's advocate. Like I'm Because I know there are people that are excited. And I'm just, I'm, I want to play devil's advocate. I don't want to shit on something until I've seen it. That's just right. kind of how I am. Um, Jeepers Creepers Reborn's trailer looked decent. The movie was not. So, it was um, fun, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> so, I need to watch it again, by the way. I do too, actually. I've been, I actually, Dude, oh, the, the DVD is at my Walmart, but I wanted a Blu ray, but I'm thinking to myself, fuck it. I'm just going to grab the DVD, man. Maybe the, yeah. maybe that, uh, what's the step up in quality going to be like? Well, really? what, what is that thing called at the top of the building? I keep the, forgetting the, the weather vane. Maybe the weather vane will look better in 480. <laughs> maybe, maybe it'll be more pixelated, so you won't even really be able to tell. But uh, I'm going to make a promise to you guys right here, right now. Not the day of, because it is Christian's wedding anniversary. But that weekend, 
we will go live after we have both seen The Exorcist Believer. Stupid fucking title. And it's going to be an all-out knockdown, drag-out live stream. We want to hear what you guys have to say. We're going to talk about what we thought. I have a feeling it's going to be a therapy session for a lot of people. And I want to do it. Awesome. Like I said, I, I I get where you're coming from, dude. I just eat all this up. I this is the most fun time to me. The build up to all this stuff is incredible. It makes for great content. It gives us a lot of stuff to talk about. I love, I love guessing about what about this, that, and the third, and all that. So I'm excited. I'm and very me excited. Too. Me too. And I can't lie, man. You remember we talked about it on the podcast openly for a while. I went into Halloween Ends terrified that mm -hmm. I was gonna fucking hate that movie, and mm -hmm. I really liked it. So. Yeah. What if I have a similar experience? I don't know. Um, and again, people stop saying I love everything that fucking comes out. I didn't love Insidious, even though I got a lot of people like, you really didn't like it? I was like, dude, I thought it was fine. Like, it was, it was fine, yeah. If, if a movie's just fine, like, does that mean I hated it? No, it's just fine. Whatever. I, I, I don't even, I'll buy it probably to have all the movies, but right. am I going to watch it more than one more time? No. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. No, yeah. I think that's, yeah. Um, well, that's just part of being on YouTube, man. It's like, you, you don't talk about everything. And then when you, some people watch two videos and they just get the idea, oh, you love everything, but. And, yeah. I mean, when's know, the last time you reviewed a movie that you vehemently hated? <sighs> Probably been a while. Cause we don't do that as content creators. No, no. Uh, I did a short on Megan. I was just like, man, I, I actually, I still, I, I thought that movie was so just all right. I still say it openly on the internet. I don't know what I think. Some I think that movie came out at a time where people were just really hoping something great would come out at that time. It mm -hmm. might have been at the beginning of the year or not. But I'm thinking to myself, guys, for fuck's sake, please stop calling this a great movie. Y'all are killing me. Like I know I call shitty movies great too, but like, come on, Megan is. The most all right movie I've ever seen. Christian, I got to show you something. It's the most all right movie I've ever seen. Tell me that this 4K art isn't fucking trash. It looks so bad. That is fucking awful. <laughs> awful. Yeah. Guess what, man? Um, I'm I'm not buying that. <laughs> Dude, it looks awful. Like that, I, and that's maybe, one of the conversation though, Nick. I'm getting extremely pissed off at these releases coming out, and then four or five months later, they'll get a 4K. Okay. Yeah, like they did that with Smile. Um, oh, that's, I'm, that's I'm, why you, I didn't buy Pearl. That's yeah. Why I didn't buy Pearl? You saw that they're doing a Walmart old 30s uh, horror movie oh. poster version of Rob Zombie's One and oh, Two. Yeah. And saw, I'm going to cop a couple of those. I'm going to get the Leprechaun one. I'm going to get the Halloween one. Um, and I'm. The and Saw. Saw. Yeah, it's cool it's probably. Well, the only problem with that is, dude, I own the eight film collection. And no, then I, I bought I bought the nine film collection after so Spiral what? came out. Nick, Nick, I have 87 copies of Friday the 13th Part 3. I know. And I have the same thing for Halloween. But it's <laughs> just like Halloween I can justify. Any know, new Halloween release, I'm buying it. But I yeah, I don't have a kid either, so I can I can blow money on stupid ass shit like that. No, it's not it's not even just that. It's like I you know I can I look at my bank account and go I could buy it, but should I? That's like, another yeah. Should yeah. I? I've been trying to do that myself. I really have. I have, I've been I've been taking it easy, and you know if I get to review something for view copy, awesome. But some stuff I'm just like I don't need that. I don't need that. Like I didn't get like Motel Hell on 4K. I was just like I don't need that. I'm getting better, but there, there was a part of my life, dude, where I just was, I was addicted to opening mail. Oh, dude, I, lo I love it too. <laughs> dude, I love ripping open the cellophane of a new like Blu-ray or a 4K. You rip like, it and go, yeah, like Jeepers Creepers. <laughs> yes, and and we always, dude, we always open it to look at the disc too. Like looking at the fucking disc is gonna do something for us, but it's like, God, look at that fucking disc art. Like, dude, go back and watch some of my Halloween collection videos from when I was a teenager. I know. Oh, and I'll be like, there's no disc art on here. That's a bummer. Like. <laughs> Yeah, it's just the same. Yeah, thing. yeah. It's I like, know, well, I know it. this is just font bullshit. Listen to me. Facts right now. Saw ten is going to be the sleeper hit of the fucking year. I'm so glad it's coming out early. I'm so glad it's not competing with the uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Fuck action. yeah. 
it's, it's, yeah, it, yeah, it gets hold too on. Hold on. Is it called? I'm excited. Like, I don't know if I'm going to go see Barbie and Oppenheimer in theaters. I'd like to. Um, I'm not against it. Um, I certainly would like to see Oppenheimer. The, the actor guy, he's great. I forget Killer his name. Murphy, yeah. Talented as fuck. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I am so excited because I've got the Voyage of the Last Demeter Dracula film. Super excited about that. Saw 10 will be the sleeper hit of the fucking year. I am calling it, mark my words, John Kramer's back. This is going to be a great film. I saw that shot that they posted of him. And I'm just like, that's that's an icon. That is a horror icon right there. And yep. I'm so glad that, you know, I feel like I'm reliving my teenage years again. That's like, here we go. Another Halloween, another Saw movie. This is what I'm excited about. I'm another excellent this movie. Let's go. Another one. <laughs> so I'm super dude. excited for Saw, dude. I really yeah. am. It was the, it was, the, you know, a lot of people were saying that they did this because <clears throat> they didn't want to compete with Five Nights at Freddy's. I mean, Smart. of course you don't want to, but they moved it in a, a whole month. Not just a week or two, a whole month. And I talked to somebody last night. The reason why they moved it an entire month ahead, they want the end of summer real estate and the beginning of fall real estate. They want to double dip with this movie because this movie has tested incredibly well. This like be, This is it. I can feel it. Peep, I yes, can smell it. People are saying this is easily the best Saw movie since the third one. Like, hands down, bar none, it is easily the best so, I talked to a guy that has actually seen it that told me it's his favorite since the first one. And I was I like, it. I was like, take a place between them. <laughs> yeah. He, he's like, no, I'm serious. This is my, like this movie rules. Like it is so good. And I can't fucking wait. Here's the argument that some people have saying, Oh, okay, cause when John Kramer was John Kramer, when uh, Tobin Bell was promoting jigsaw, he said that, you know, it, it took a lot for me to come back and I really, for me to come back, I don't need the money at this point. I'm, I'm semi-retired. I have to really love the script and that's what'll get me to come back. Now, some people would say, well, did you, did you read Jigsaw, buddy? Like what the fuck? And I Jigsaw get it, one. but I'll never forget. Here's your key to freedom. That's a fucking great line. I love that line so much. It's to me, that movie's worth watch. That movie is the most, unplausible his, out of any of them but that line at the end of him saying and i'm not talking about him i'm talking about the no. girl creating that fucking geyser <laughs> you made this bitch are you <sighs> kidding me but yeah Dude, here's your key to his scene is the best scene in that movie oh it's his fucking scene insane. Is the best. my wife is the biggest jigsaw fan in the world that is her favorite like one of her favorite franchises when i say city do you want to start binging the saw movies again to get ready i guarantee you i will do an audio message without her knowing it i'm gonna say sydney want to binge the saw movies to get ready for the new one she'll be like fuck yeah let's do it she loves those movies i think they're great they're a soap opera you get it you get everything with those movies so i'm so fucking excited for saw 10 i can't even contain it yeah it's, the haters saw dude, 10 is back bitches saw 10 is going to be awesome it's gonna make seven hundred million dollars uh, box office. No, but I, I'm gonna say this: looking 120, at one twenty, bro, one twenty, it's gonna do more than one twenty. I was okay. gonna say, looking at what? Oh yeah, looking at where horror is at right now, dude. Okay, let's pull this. I'm gonna pull this up live. Well, it, you know, you guys are listening back, but I'm gonna pull this up right now because I really want to sh- show you guys. Cinema Score okay. is they they poll the the audience opening night and they get a score from the audience for a movie mm-hmm. insidious the red door got a c plus that is bad for a cinema score it is a 38 percent on rotten tomatoes not good right. it is currently sitting at after being out for a week and a half two weeks now 130 <laughs> million dollars what yes that's incredible salt 10 is absolutely gonna make a hundred plus million i can't 100%. wait i can't fucking wait the only question christian is why are you i mean i'm cool with it i know you're cool with it but like to general audiences people are gonna be like wait saw 10 so spiral was saw nine well not really no but yeah <laughs> because that is confusing it's like the last time they had a number was saw six it went saw 3d or saw the final chapter uh jigsaw spiral and now they're back to roman numerals because how can you not have the fucking x you have yeah, to have you have x. to have the x and i, I wonder if screams they're kind of like tongue-in-cheeking 
the numbers. We're calling it it's it's scream six, but it's it is what it isn't, but it really is, right? And they're just kind of like, fuck it, let's just call it Scream Six. We're not ignoring the other films, fuck it, blah, blah, blah. And I wonder if Scream's I think Scream's having a big impact on horror again. And I wonder, I wonder if that had something to do with it. And they're just like, fuck it, dude. They called it Scream Six and it made more money than the, the one where they just called it Scream. Let's call it Saw X. Let's call it Saw 10. Let's do a pun. X looks like fucking blades. Fuck it. And I love that. I love to me, there's a prestige with a high number like that. It's just like if they're making a Saw 10, man. I don't know. I just I feel like the quality is going to be there. I, I would argue that the quality was always there for Saw. People may be burnt out. They may not like the stories. But I feel like, I don't know, man. I thought the quality was there on Spiral. I like Spiral. Uh, I liked it. I know it's it's not it's not highly highly regarded. And I wouldn't highly regard it that much either. But he, like to me, Jigs Saw never lost quality in terms of creation and production and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm rambling, but I'm just excited. And I'm, I'm glad that I'm just glad that it's called Saw X. I'm glad it's not just called Saw again. I've just been like, that would have been I, like, oh, I, wanna get a, I can't wait to get a poster. I uh, can't yeah. fucking wait. Well, but I will say the that theatrical. Have they released they, it? Just a, just a teaser poster. Um, just it's just the, yeah, the, the Saw X one. But do you see the new meme that's being created? Because obviously everybody's talking about Barbenheimer. Well, I guess yeah, Saw I 10. That. <laughs> Saw Patrol comes out the same day as Paw Patrol. So they're like, ah, oh, this is going to be Saw Patrol. Sorry, uh, I'm not doing a double feature. I'm not going to go see Paw Patrol. Even uh, though my uh, kid likes Saw it twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I will be seated for Saw. See Preview Saw. showing. Are you going to see Saw? <laughs> oh, I'm going to see Saw. See Socks. Socks. But I'm excited about that, man. I'm just, I can't wait to talk more about that. And if the audience was down with it, I've been thinking about it. We all, I want to do a show going over the Saw movies again. Whether we do that after we see the new one or whatever. I don't know. I'm constantly coming up with ideas. You know, I wanted to do my buddy Valentine and like Christian, we never summer. did us. We never did like a dedicated to Saw episode, did we? Oh, I dude, I could get because I that I would be we would reverse roles on this one. I would fucking scream. This is my Halloween five. I would scream at the top of my lungs. How everybody is just full of shit. They're saying they don't like saw five because they've watched it once when they binge it. They've never gone back and they just think they don't like it. I think saw five is so fucking good. I love the characters in saw five. I think the Hoffman era is the equivalent to the Kane hotter era. And if you don't agree, kiss my ass. Like those sequels, I love them. I fucking love five so much. Love five. I think five is better than four. Uh, I, I, it's to me is, but anyway, <laughs> no, we have not done a saw show. Wait, I love that. Sh I dude, that's that's our Friday the Thirteenth. People need to realize that every fucking year since Saw three, which my mom had to get me the ticket for because I was too young, and and four as well, and probably five, but every year since Saw three. I would go to the theater to see him. And it was a part of my life. People cannot, like, if you're younger than us, if you're, if you're like 20 years old now, listen to us, you can't understand what that means to the horror fans that grew up watching Friday the 13th in the theater. There is a connection that is so fucking deep. It's a part of my life. When I look at Saw 4, I remember what I was doing when that movie came out, what my life was like, what music I was listening to. It takes me back to a beautiful part of my childhood that... I can't explain. Yeah, no, I'll I ramble about this shit. I fucking love Saw. I started seeing Saw with Saw three as well. Uh, we, me and my buddy Joe Williamson, bought a ticket to another movie and we snuck, we walked right into the other one. Yeah, yeah. They started cracking down around that time at mine, but I, I did that for Halloween. Rob Zombies. Yeah. So, had to well, sneak it. but all right, Christian. To cap this episode, I think we should revisit what we lost: the Blumhouse. The Blumhouse yeah. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, guys, I do not expect you guys to do this in the comments because we're going to list quite a few movies. I hope uh, somebody does. I hope if, somebody does. If you do, uh, more power to you. Uh, but Christian and I, I think have been guilty about this at times. I, I think the horror community as a whole is guilty of this. <laughs> we, it's like you say Blumhouse and people are like, oh, uh, yeah. and it's like, but is that fair? Or is it just because they have a couple stinkers that stunk so bad that you're just like, uh, but like, right. is it actually a solid, you know, outfit studio? Well, let's find out. <clears throat> 
We're going to give you our opinions, whether we give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. This is, uh, there's going to be a couple that I know Christian and I have never seen, never even heard of. Actually, you know what? No, I'll just say everyone. That say way. everyone. I, I'll have no problem because then, then people can say, oh, go check out such yeah. and such. Okay, Christian, get out. Massive thumbs down at first. Now I think it's his best film. I think it's great. I loved it. Uh, yes. I was I was I was clouded because John Carpenter was vocal saying he's just ripping this guy is ripping me off, and um, no I think Get Out's his best movie. Thumbs up. Same, same. Sorry, By far be, I won't be as long winded about anything else. No, you're good, Megan. Thumbs down. Haven't seen it. I have no interest. Cam. Thumbs up. Okay. No, 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 no. Dash okay. Cam. No, Cam about a. Uh, I believe it's a. A, a cam girl it's about a cam girl oh dude i streamed that on shutter or something uh it might not have been Shutter. It might have been netflix thumbs up that's a good movie that's a good movie i haven't seen it um <clears throat> mike flanagan's hush thumbs up thumbs up sweetheart haven't seen it me neither the invisible man massive thumbs up yeah incredible movie um shout out lee winnell yes the Vigil. I haven't seen it, so I can't speak to it. I would go th thumbs in the middle, but I'll give it the bump to thumbs up. Sydney likes that movie. It's Nanny. Okay. Haven't seen Nanny. Me neither. Soft and Quiet. Haven't seen that. Me neither. This is going to be the first one I think that Christian's going to make some people mad. The Black yeah. Phone. <clears throat> You know, I went thumbs up last time when we talked about it, but I'm going to go thumbs down this time because the majority of the film is lackluster. Um, I think the beginning of the film is incredible. They set up the 70s atmosphere so well. It seemed real. The music was good. They actually picked some good songs. But once the kids are in there, they're much safer than they are. They're much safer than they are out of abduction. The guy did nothing. And I'm not insinuating anything, you, you freaks. But I'm saying, like, where's the danger? He sat there with a silly Halloween mask on and just talked to him for a few minutes. Get the fuck out of here. Like, stop. Black phone is, is mid at best. Is that what the kids are saying? Mid? Mid. Yeah, it's mid at best. That movie should have been way more dangerous and freaky. Thumbs down. Go fuck yourself. Uh, that's a movie I've had a love affair with. Uh, or but I still I still don't want to. I, Nick, I, I, I like black phone still, but that is not good enough. Come no. on. And I, I was just about to say, I was really high on that movie when I came out and I've had a weird relationship with it. I say thumbs in the middle now. I really, really do. Uh, you, you nailed everything. Uh, but yeah, it gets to a point in the movie where it's like, where's the danger? Where's the ingenuity? Scariest scene is a kid about to get his ass beat in the bathroom. Yes. So we thumbs in the middle. Yeah. It is not aged as well for me. Uh, freaky. Thumbs up. Love freaky. <clears throat> I'll go thumbs up. I think thumbs in the middle for me, but I like Vince Vaughn a lot. Paranormal Activity. Massive thumbs up. Same. <clears throat> Ouija Origin of Evil. Big Massive thumbs up. thumbs up. Halloween 2018. Thumbs in the middle. Can we do thumbs in the middle? Is, is that a rule? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Um, I'll go thumbs up. Um, you know, I really need to rewatch these movies. I haven't watched Kills Ends or whatever in a while. I'll go thumbs up because, dude, you know what? I'll be honest with you. The, the opening scene of the film I don't really like anymore, but the shot of Michael, the most John Carpenter thing ever is that shot of Michael walking up the driveway where he gets that hammer. That's fucking oh. great. Yeah, it, it took me right back to Halloween, too. Fucking great, dude. I'll give it a thumbs up. Ironically, that. Rick Rosenthal, but yeah. Um, yeah. Split, thumbs up. Massive. Thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up. The Bay. Thumbs up. I know we. I told you about that. It's like a found footage type movie, dude. It's yeah. creepy, just for the audience really quick. It's about this, this town that has like dirty, like Flint, Michigan water, but the water's full of these like micro bacteria and this guy pulls a fish out of the lake and like he looks at it and there's all kinds of these things eating the fish and people start drinking the water and they turn into zombies in the town and it's it's chaos it's awesome the bay check it out 
massive thumbs up. Okay. Oculus, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Black Box. Uh, Black Box. After losing his wife in memory in a car accident, a single father undergoes an agonizing experimental treatment that causes... I, I don't know if I've seen it. Though. I don't I, think I've seen I, it. I haven't seen it, but that's the poster. No, I have not seen that. <clears throat> I, keep okay. thinking, I keep thinking about a movie called The Box with Cameron Diaz, which is a totally different thing. Christian, I cannot believe this movie has an 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. What's that? Creep 2. Massive thumbs down. It's one of the worst Blumhouse movies I've ever seen. A hundred? You're fucking kidding me. It's a terrible sequel. Yeah, thumbs down. Creep, thumbs up. Thumbs up. And, and for the record, because I kind of glossed over that, guys, Creep is great because you don't trust this guy. You don't know who he is. Creep 2 is literally somebody else meeting this guy up to do stuff with. You already know the cat's out of the bag. Nothing scary, nothing smart about it terrible sequel they should have done a sequel where it's a completely new psycho bring that yeah. back bring back sequels that just do completely different shit what, what happened to that who cares if it took people fucking 30 years to fall in love with some of these movies there's a movie called torn hearts haven't seen it me neither the deep house you haven't seen that me neither happy death day to you you guys know big thumbs up for me i i want to nick that's just thumbs just down <sighs> I don't think it's, I don't think it's that I, I, it's fun. I do. I I'll go thumbs in the middle. I, I didn't dude. It's just like that sequence of Paramore's hard times while she's finding different ways to kill herself is, is more than enough to give it thumbs in the middle. Fair. All right. All right. All right. Okay. But happy death day. Thumbs up. A big thumbs up. Yeah. Madres. I haven't, I don't think I've seen that. If you show me the poster art, I might, Sometimes I'll stream stuff. No, I haven't seen that. Hurt. No, I don't think I've seen that either. Black as night. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not funny. No, I haven't seen that. We both laughed last time too. Uh, the Visit. The Visit, big thumbs up. Yeah, I give a thumbs up. I, I still think that's his last great movie in my opinion. I'm not old, man. <laughs> you know, I actually, dude, I really disliked old. I think oh. I might even like cabin at knock at the cabin more, which is I, not yeah. saying much. Yeah. I did not like knocking. I love Batista, but fuck man. Insidious. Massive thumbs up. I love that movie so much. Paranormal activity three. Fucking Massive. gigantic thumbs up. Yep. The Town That Dreaded Sundown remake. Big thumbs up. Big thumb. Yeah. Great remake. People check it out. Yeah, it is. 2014-ish, I think. Great movie. 2012, yeah, 2013, 2014. Bingo Hell. I haven't seen it, but I'm going to give it a thumbs up just for a great name like that. Okay. 13 <laughs> Sins. No idea. Is that a TV show? Does it have it's the Friday Ron the 13th font on the front? No, no it's a movie. It's no. got Ron Perlman. Uh, mm, I haven't seen it. Thumbs in the middle because of Ron Perlman. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sinister. Gigantic fucking thumbs up. Yep. Run, sweetheart, run. No idea. No idea. No. I've heard of Noct that. But I mean... Go ahead. Nocturne. Nocturne. Mm, haven't seen that either. Either. The Manor. The Manor. Thumbs in the middle. Okay. I haven't seen it. Don't go to your way. Unfriended. Thumbs up. Gi yeah, big thumbs up. I love shit like that. It's personal. Taste, Unfriended. Dark web. Be, be bigger thumbs up. Yeah. I, I, I fucking love those movies. Yeah. I'm a sucker. I'm a chunk. Paranormal my movie too. Thumbs in the middle on that one. Yeah. I don't love that one. A, a paranormal activity thumbs in the middle, though, mm -hmm. which is decent enough. Yeah. The Hunt. Thumbs in the middle, but that movie got really big praise when it came out. I, I thought it was fine. I did not think. I, it, same thing as Megan. I think people were, I don't know. Thumbs in the yeah. middle. The Purge Anarchy. Thumbs up. Is that two or three? That's the second one. 
with Frank Grillo. Thumbs up. Yep. Insidious Chapter 3, thumbs in the middle. I'd have to watch it again. I'll concur with that to be able to say. It's been a while since I've seen 3, but at least thumbs in the middle for me as well. Viral. What the fuck is that? Show me the art for that. Ah, uh, I cannot remember if I've seen that or not. I haven't. That pass. Ma, thumbs down. Yeah, I hated that movie. It sucked. The First Purge. I haven't seen it. Terrible. Fucking garbage. I believe you. The Purge election year. Thumbs up. Yeah, that's the third one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the first three. This is one. People don't talk about this movie enough. I'm pretty sure you and I both gave this massive thumbs up. I loved this movie. I've still only seen it once. The Belko Experiment. Gigantic thumbs up. That movie ruled. Unhuman. I haven't, I haven't seen it. it. Bloodline with Sean William Scott. I, I I meant to try to check that out after we talked about it last time. I never did, but I haven't seen it. I like Sean William. The Forever Purge. Garbage. Yeah, can I take your word for it? They're, the they really, it, it sucks, man, because they just less it more talking, more talking, more talking. You know, blah, 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 I just get boring. I hated the first purge, terrible. Forever Purge is just as bad. The Craft Legacy. It's fucking disgusting. Bad. I I, I, I saw it. I saw it. it just because people said I, I streamed it on something. I might have actually got like the voodoo code from somebody just because I was like, let me just see how bad it is. Dude, you can't re. You, you, no, you're not recreating that angsty mid '90s great cast. Fucking cast in the craft. The, the cast for the craft was insatiable. How good they were. Nev is lovely, and I love Nev in that movie. To be honest, uh, the star is uh, Veruca. What is that woman's name? Uh, she was uh, she not Veruca. Um, she she was Waterboy's boyfriend. That woman, you know, what I'm talking oh, about. Yes. Oh fuck! She, she got a weird name, but you know, what I'm talking about. She is a fucking star in the '90s. Uh, Nobody name, can touch her. Her name is uh, Vicky in Waterboy, and she is Vicky. played by um, Vicky Valencourt. <laughs> Faruza Balk. Faruza. See, for, 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 what did I say? Faruka, whatever. I meant to say Veruza. She is a star, man. Nobody. She is the 90s badass chick. Vicky showed me her boobies, and I like those too. Dude, yeah. Yeah. You, the, yeah, terrible sequel. The original yeah. craft is fucking amazing, though. I love that movie. Dash Cam. Terrible. I Just seen really it. unlikable, unlistenable people in that in that movie that's i hated a, it that's a found footage movie right it is i just you ever just like you have to really go out of your way for me to just like be annoying enough to where i don't want like it's not necessarily Baba Duke annoying but i was just like oh i really don't i don't enjoy listening to yeah. this movie not enough to offend you but enough to be like i just Fuck you. yeah yeah uh the lords of salem just fucking massive thumbs up people yeah. still ain't ready for that movie mr harrigan's phone Believe it or not, I haven't seen that. Neither have I, but I heard it wasn't very good. Uh, this one you told me you hadn't seen. I have seen it. Brooke made me watch it years ago on Netflix one night when we were trying to find a horror movie we hadn't seen. Mercy Black. Fucking awful. I hadn't seen that, no. Yeah, thumbs I, down, I, I guess. I want you to watch it just so you can see how bad it is. Um, Evil Eye. No, I haven't no. seen that, no. There's a lot of Blumhouse shit we haven't seen. The Lie. <laughs> the fuck With is Peter that, dude? Yeah, I, I've never seen it. What are you talking Don't about? Let go. No. Uh, no. Dark Skies. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Yeah. <sighs> what? Where do you think I am? Halloween ends. Halloween ends. Massive thumbs up. <sighs> All right. I'll go thumbs up, too. I like it. I, I do like that film. It's just, dude, as a package, makes no sense. The trilogy is wonky as fuck. Um, I believe you saw this. I can't remember if you had the with Kevin Bacon, you should have left. Yeah, terrible film. Came out right before the pandemic happened. Garbage. I actually like Kevin's Bacon. What is that movie called? They, they Them. I like that better than that movie. 
He also just said, I like Kevin's bacon. So oh, I, I do love Kevin's bacon. <laughs> um, thriller. No idea. Who doesn't love thriller? <laughs> it's Michael Jackson. <laughs> uh, yeah, no clue. The purge. Thumbs up. I fucking love that movie. That's what I'm I do. I'm so hit and miss with Ethan Hawke. I either love him or I fucking can't stand him in movies. Yeah. And I loved him in The Purge. Uh, Black Christmas 2019. Thumbs down. Massive. Uh, this was one that might surprise some of you guys. Paranormal Activity, the marked ones. Thumbs up. Fucking gigantic thumbs up. Halloween kill. Thumbs up. Halloween, Halloween kills is the best of this trilogy to me at, at this point, I think. I'd go thumbs up. Just want to let you guys know after ends came out, he agreed with me that that one was the best of the trilogy. But Well, I, I you know what? I, I, I really I know why you would say kills. It's a lot of people's favorite. I think as a Halloween film, it's the only one that does. Ex well, Halloween ends does end, but like kills, it's like. Dude, he's a brute motherfucker. Yeah, you. I think you gravitate toward that one because it's the closest Michael's ever come to Jason. Like maybe, maybe, maybe I think it. I you know, but but then again, dude, like lately, all I've been thinking about is Halloween 2018 because I love the music to that one the most. Yeah, and I love that shot of Michael walking down the the driveway, which is a moment of the film. I understand, but like, I don't know, man. Like, I could change. That's great this film. shit. There's great shit in all three of those. Of movies. course there is. Unfortunately, there is. They don't all three cohere super well. No, dude. It's 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 truly that's a video one day. Or not a video. That's some I really would love to get into that. Like I can't believe how bizarre the decision making was for just for Lori to all of a sudden unlock her doors and go to sleep and have nice hair after the motherfucker's missing. What sense does that make on any planet? Certainly not planet CHH. Anyway, makes sense to me, but <laughs> Insidious I, I Chapter know. Two, thumbs in the middle. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably my least favorite out of all of them. To be honest with you, The Green Inferno, thumbs up. Massive thumbs up. Uh, this is another one. Uh, we just spoke about it a little bit. They slash them. Um, thumbs in the middle. Could have been a lot better, I think. Yeah, I'll say the same thing. Uh, it it had a lot of potential. Uh, I don't think it needed the slasher element that they forced in. Um. Insidious, the last key, massive thumbs up. But you see, it's interesting because a movie like Rent the Rental, I fucking love that slasher element that comes in at the very end. I just it didn't need it either. Well, and they slash them. I just really don't think they. No, no, no. It. I agree, but I'm saying it's interesting that I agree, but on another sense, because I revisited the rental a few weeks ago. Dude, I love that movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're all cheating on each other. They're doing yeah. drugs. And then this motherfucker shows up and just beats their ass. <laughs> I love it. I love that movie. Insidious, the last key, thumbs up. Fucking love that movie. Here we go, right here. This is my Blu-ray. I this is my favorite one. I keep it out in the open so I can watch it often. I love it. Lynn Shea is yeah. a god goddess. Paranormal, paranormal activity next of kin. Fucking massive thumbs up. I love that movie. I, I go thumbs in the middle, but Christian tempts me to go thumbs up simply just for the fucking scene and like the cave. The cave. It's a suspense, man. It's good as fuck. I I will give it that. Uh, Amityville, the awakening turd. I don't know if I've seen that, but there's no way I could even Dude, remotely give it a thumbs middle, in the middle of anything. With, um, it's got Bella Thorne in it. Her brother is like, sick. Oh, Bell. Yeah. Fuck that movie. It's fucking terrible. Do you know um, that there's a movie called the haunting in Connecticut Two, the Georgia haunting or something? It's fucking awful. You know what I'm talking it about? Is. I've seen it. It's bad, dude. How can there be a movie called A Haunting in Connecticut that takes place in Georgia? What the fuck is wrong oh, with you, idiot people? That is, that's all for branding. It was all you, for branding. Cause you know the what first I'm talking movie, about, though. So I'm not yeah. going crazy because for a second, I'm no. thinking I'm... Oh. I've seen it. It's fucking terrible. A Haunting in Connecticut to Ghosts of Georgia. <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding me. So bad. It's so a haunting bad. in Connecticut to ghosts of Georgia. <laughs> okay, go Makes ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, Jezebel. I know a few, but I've never seen the movie. Yeah, me too. Um, it was directed by Kevin Gruder, though, director of Saw Six Good and Saw him. Ten. 
fucking sure it's great. Paranormal Activity 4, massive thumbs down. Worst one. Yeah, thumbs down. The Visitor? I've never seen that. Show me the art for that. I need to jog my... Uh... <sighs> Maybe I haven't. No, I, I, I might have, but I, I based off that artwork. It's starring a bunch of people I've never heard of. Um, Visions from 2015. I don't think I've seen that Again, either. Directed by Kevin Gruder. Okay. Busy man, man into man. After Saw Six. Uh, Incarnate. Never seen it. No. Shit, these movies all suck. Fucking terrible. Thumbs down for Truth or Dare. Yeah, I didn't like that either. I didn't know you saw that. I can't. I guess I just can't I remember what we talked about. Christian. Oh, yeah, I'm a big fan. Yeah, my buddy Dave went and saw it. Fucking terrible. Uh, the Lazarus Effect. I want to say that. Do you know what I'm talking thumbs about? Thumbs down. Thumbs down. Okay. I've seen it. I don't have any thumbs down. Paranormal Activity: The Ghost Dimension. <laughs> <laughs> Tread carefully here. Thumbs in the middle. Okay. I just, okay. dude, I don't know. I just think it's, it is what I'll it meet, is. I'll meet you there. A couple, like a month ago, Christian was telling me, dude, watch just it again. Watch it. Have a good time. So I watched it again and I was like, it's not terrible. Like, it's not. Yeah. Paranormal Activity 4 is still the worst, bar none. It's pretty, it's just, yeah, it's pretty boring and that, yeah, it's not good enough. Yeah. Ghost Sinister 2. Sinister 2, giant thumbs up. Yep. The gallows. Thumbs up your ass and turn it yep. upside down. <laughs> uh, a movie from 2019 called Prey. Directed by Frank Calhoun. <laughs> Dude, I don't fucking know. I mean, does this sound like it's any good? Uh, it doesn't have an actor's name I recognize, and there's the critical score is 13%. So yeah, probably yeah, not. Brother. Thumbs down. Uh, Area 51. Thumbs down. You, okay. I was going to say, you've seen that. I haven't. Yeah, thumbs down. Firestarter 2022. Still haven't seen it. Terrible. Even John Carpenter was shat on it in an interview that he did the music for. Yeah. He well, his check, his check cleared. Yeah, well, he's old. That's just goes to show you, dude. He's old school Hollywood. They don't they don't make them like that no more. No. You know, uh, he, Mark, he was on Charlie, he's on Charlie Band's podcast, which great episode. You should check that out if you haven't. Because I know you, I know you bought listen to the Rob Zombie ones. Yeah, and he's like, you know, we did the music for uh, Firestar. You know, Charlie, it, it wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> he says that it's not even like Charlie Band asked him, "Did you like working on it?" He just goes, "You know, we did Firestar. Yeah, you know, it didn't come out that good." <laughs> hey, he was on. <laughs> I fucking love John Carpenter. Happy birthday, buddy! I know he just had a birthday the other week. Yeah, seventy-five. Um, Martyrs. A thumbs in the middle. I haven't seen it. Thumbs in the middle. Fantasy Island. Haven't seen it. That's bad, dude. Yeah, it's, it's literally really just bad. a pointless ass, just terrible movie. Thumbs down. That was when I was just buying every movie that came out, and I bought that, and I that really made me rethink everything I knew about life. No more blind buying. Uh, Ouija twenty fourteen. Terrible. I would agree. It's just not nowhere near good enough. It's a movie, but yeah, to take thumbs a property down. like Ouija, that's a thumbs down. Uh, the Darkness, starring Kevin Bacon. Show me Never the art for that. I, that sounds super familiar. That movie does suck. I saw. I remember I, it was an old region free episode. Somebody brought that up to check it out, and I watched it. It's fucking garbage. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. And then uh, we've got the. Uh, Gallows Act 2 as the last one. Haven't I gotta seen watch it. that, dude. What, yeah, if, it's, what if it's okay? <laughs> Could it get worse? I I would say no, because that I I absolutely loathed that loathed that first movie. But yeah. I've been proven wrong before. You know, I think things can't get any worse, and then they get worse. So I don't fucking know. But uh, yeah, I think you said didn't. Yeah, I think Christian said it's on YouTube. <laughs> Which tells you all you need to know about the Gallows Act, too. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was It was a while ago. I don't know if it's still on now, but it was. But... So we ran. There's we... more good than bad, I think. Yes. At least that I've so, seen. But I think we got to the bottom of it. 
the bad is really fucking bad. So I think yeah. that's why when people hear Blumhouse and they go, oh, it's because their bad is really bad, but they actually have more decent to good than bad. Uh, and who knows, too, some of those movies that we were really, really, really critical of that they just didn't get involved in terms of uh, they had nothing to do with the actual making of the movie, the way Paranormal Activity was, but, but they became involved as a whatever more funding, better. Yeah, it's a financing. There's definitely some movies where I'm sure they were literally just the financier and they, yeah. They, yeah. Well, not 100%. So, but you know, nobody really thinks about that. At least the average person granted, I don't, but doing shows like this kind of makes you start trying to understand the biggest thing in movies is like, who's really to blame, you know? And I think that's something it's, you, you realized a writer, that, you know, who's really to blame, you know, people, give uh west craven shit for like deadly friend he he intended to make a movie that really wasn't a horror film but the studio basically forced his hand no you have to add this and you have to add this and if not we're not going to hire you again you're not going to work for it you have to go along to get along it's hollywood kind of a weird example to bring up but you know deadly and then the writer of deadly friend was like oh i hate the movie you know this is nothing at all like what the book was it's not you know and west was trying to do the book the writer talked about Wes Craven making that film. Like Wes made a movie and then the studio was like, no, 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 no. Where's the fucking, why aren't people fucking bleeding and, and blowing up? And where's all this crazy shit? And then you get a base, you get a scene with a basketball blowing off a woman's head, which I think is great. But my point is, my point is I don't think every bad movie that has Blumhouse's name attached to it necessarily means it's their fault. So just no. keep that in mind. Just know that a lot of people make a movie and stuff shit rolls downhill but just just kind of remember where it starts that's all i'm saying yes it, i kind of was kind of i'm almost wonder if john carpenter was gonna do the music for exorcist believer but i i guess he's not because he could do some kind of like tubular bell sounds like a john carpenter song for yes. yes i mean it does. It, it does you know so i don't know yeah i mean maybe he took some inspiration from it <laughs> you know you we know, did exorcist did all... believer charlie it wasn't that good <laughs> to be continued on the Exor exorcist believer front oh so it is in the last thing it's no it's no longer called the exorcist believer it's the exorcist believer like there's no the exorcist asterisk believer anymore right um, i think they changed it it's the exorcist believer which is probably well, why that mom from the original comes into play and that's what the movie's referencing i'm assuming no, no. It's, it's got the, the, what is that, semicolons or whatever? Okay. Yeah. The okay. Believer. It is two hours and one minute long. Maybe it was called initially Exorcist the Believer or something. I don't know. Maybe I'm just yeah. losing my mind. I'm getting old. What's the budget on this? We don't have a budget on this. I think it probably costs like 25, 30 million. But then again, okay. you have to think about what they cost to acquire the universal pay to acquire the rights just to make it. It's probably a shitload of money. That's what, Christian. David Gordon Green and Danny McBride got the whole trilogy. So they the whole uh, trilogy. That means that they there could be a, a fun movie out of the three, at least. You know, we'll see. There probably will be. I mean, you're gonna get, yeah. If this is Halloween 2018, the next one you're just gonna have Bazuzu killing a bunch of people. Dude, what if what if the next what if the next one was called Exorcist Buzzsaw? Like, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Yeah, and then the third one, you're gonna yeah. find out there's a Pazuzu copycat. And <laughs> dude, if the demons are fighting with each other, like legitimate, oh dude, get ready, get oh, ready. Dude. Anyway, all right, guys, I think that's gonna wrap it up. I think we talked about a lot of topics today. I think we covered some important shit, and I think we salvaged the most important pieces of the last episode that we, you know, uh, that disappeared into the ether. But honestly, it was probably for the best because we were able to talk a little bit more about Blumhouse as a whole because we finally got some shit for The Exorcist. So I think it worked out um, in the end. I do. I do, too. I think we had a good episode and uh, it's nice to get back to work. And uh, thank you for all the listeners and know that... Um, We've got new stuff coming. Like I said, we'll do a live soon. You know, I'll get with Nick and we'll figure out what night we can do. The, you need a live debrief. And uh, hopefully that becomes a part of your routine. Same way you enjoy listening to, um, you know, your, 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 your weekly episodes. And all of it will be on Spotify. That shouldn't be a problem. 
So thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, and take the next 100 episode journey with us. We appreciate it. See you. So, I guess that's it. <laughs>